All right, thank you, Dr. Blackwell. Let me say Hotep Havaragani to my African African studies uh, colleagues and contemporaries and seekers after the truth all. And let me say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, but certainly never good night and never ever uh, goodbye. My name is the Reverend uh, Nathaniel Wayne Morton. I'm the pastor of the New Life Institutional Baptist Church here in the city of Los Angeles. And uh, when I said I always find goodbyes traumatizing, that's personal. All right, and uh, we want to welcome you to another offering uh, of social justice content. Uh, we call it uh, It's Time, which is a broad subject. And, and the school teachers are always impressive on, on you. The fact that if you're talking about time, you pick too broad a subject. And then we have the nerve to put social justice out there with it, another broad subject, but we try to keep it within the confines of the environment, which we're doing a poor job of maintaining and, uh, and exercising our stewardship over and with. And of course, the uh, economics, which by this being a capitalistic system in which we all are embroiled, we cannot escape it. Uh, even the homeless have to have money and they don't have a house to uh, stay in. Uh, as they say, they don't have a pot to pee in and a window to chunk it out, but they got to uh, give the system uh, money in order to continue to eke out their bare uh, existence. And so uh, we have to address these matters, these uh, inequities. Yes, they are inequities and these inequalities because that's what they are, inequalities. And uh, uh, we cannot shy away from it or look look away from it because it's right here in our faces. That's why we call this a social justice uh, broadcast because you can't uh, serve God or worship God in a bubble or uh, in a vacuum. You got to be out here with people like me and I got to be out here with people like, like you. And uh, when we take the mask off, we're going to see how we, how, we, how we both are. And uh, but that's the only way we can do God's will among his people is to get out among uh, his people because there's a scripture that says, how can you say that you love God whom you have not seen and hate your brother whom you see every day? And remember, Jesus said, uh, in as much as you have done this unto the least of these, my brothers and my sisters, you have done it uh, unto me. So we have to serve God by serving one another as we uh, uh uh, recognize and respect the image of God in each and every one of us. Uh, that said, I want to uh, thank God for allowing us to uh, do another broadcast uh, and clearing our minds, allowing our minds to be clear, uh, giving us a reasonable portion of health and strength and clothing us in our right mind so that we can uh, at least uh, be uh receptive let's put it that way to what the spirit would say unto the churches all right all right two things i want to cover in this broadcast i trust i shall not overdo either one and the first is the fact that uh, back in january 24th of this year uh in braxton mississippi uh some fellows that call themselves the Goon Squad, Deputy Christian Deadman, Deputy Hunter Elward, Deputy Brett McAlpin, Deputy Jeffrey Middleton, Jeffrey, Deputy uh, Daniel Opdyke, and uh, Deputy Joshua Hartfield, who is uh, from Richland County, which was the next county over. But they were in Rankin County and uh, they called themselves the Goon Squad, and they uh, broke into the house of uh, Mr. Michael Jenkins and Mr. Eddie Parker, who were two black men, uh, whom the uh, white folks were trying to get out of the neighborhood. And so these uh, 
Gold Squad uh, deputies uh, broke into their house, bypassed their uh, outdoor cameras so they wouldn't uh, be identified. And for the next two hours, these six deputies uh, tortured, brutalized, and uh, yeah, tortured and brutalized Mr. Michael Jenkins and Mr. Eddie uh, Parker. They were victims of police violence. All right, as we said, this happened back up on the 24th of January. Uh, and then the matter, of course, when the fellows got to the hospital, uh, what happened was that uh, one of the deputies in terrorizing uh, Mr. Michael Jenkins put his uh, revolver in Mr. Jenkins' mouth. And uh, after a minute, he pulled the trigger. And the, fortunately, the bullet didn't kill uh, Mr. Jenkins, but it uh, lacerated his tongue and it came out his neck. You know, that's nothing but the grace of God that uh, the man is not paralyzed. And uh, as, as Mr. Jenkins and Mr. Parker, well, Mr. Jenkins especially, uh, lay on the floor bleeding out, then the, uh, the goon squad, uh, who realized that they had gone too far, stepped out on the front porch to decide how they were going to uh, cover all of this up. You know how they do. And uh, things went downhill from there because they got caught. <laughs> when Mr. Jenkins finally got to the hospital and Mr. Parker finally got to the hospital, they told the people what had happened. And uh, as a result, uh, this week, uh, these six goon squad officers had to plead uh, guilty and confess, rather, that they had actually done these things. That's how I know it. That's how you know it now. That's how it's all over the news uh, now that they had done uh, these these things. And it turns out that one of the deputies had uh, previously killed a Damien Cameron in 2021. And Damon Cameron's uh, mother, who her name is Monica Lee, believes that if the sheriff had taken action in her son's death, maybe Mr. Jenkins and Mr. Parker's ordeal would have been prevented. Okay? All right. And the deputy that uh, shot Mr. Damien Cameron in 2021 was none other than Hunter Elwood, Deputy Hunter Elwood. So these guys have been at it a while. I want you to take note of the fact of the county that they represented, Rankin County. Uh, the name Rankin should ring a bell because he was a, a congressman from that area and he was a racist. Uh, he uh, blocked the uh, black people of the South from getting the benefits, black soldiers of the GI Bill, even though it was a federally uh, funded, sponsored program, but Mr. Rankin, John, Mr. John Rankin, when he was a uh, congressman, had made a stipulation that this federal program would be uh, locally uh, administered. And that's how he was able to block the uh, black GIs and the black veterans from getting the same benefits that the white GIs or the white veterans were receiving. See how that works? Uh, and remember that during this time, Negroes were not allowed to vote. They were intimidated uh, from voting and they had to pay uh, expensive poll tax even if they uh, were to uh, attempt to vote. And if you had to vote the way the, the uh, ruling majority wanted you to vote, else you couldn't vote. Uh, else you would get uh, lynched, strung up, or run out of town, or a combination of all three. And so uh, it is in the light of that type of background that we find that these uh, six officers felt that they were they had immunity to go into a uh, uh, private citizen's house and terrorize them and tell them to go back to uh, Jackson, Mississippi, which was just a few miles uh, down the road, which was over in Hines County. Get out of Rankin County, because Rankin County, uh, which was Braxton, Mississippi, is, you guessed it, Lily White. All right, and so uh, these things have been revealed. 
uh, to us in the last couple of weeks. And now we are in uh, receipt and knowledge of uh, just how unjust our justice system uh, can be. And uh, so we have to uh, weigh those things in mind. We, we come a long way, but we still got a long way to go in all 50 states because remember George Floyd was not in uh, Mississippi uh, <clears throat> when he was killed by Derek Chauvin. But the, 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 that white racism, uh, white supremacist uh, ideology travels all over the world so that a black man is not safe in any county, in any city, in any state or municipality. Uh, he's always got his life in his own hand. So we uh, uh, have to weigh these things in as we get ready to uh, go to vote next uh, uh, next year in the 2024 elections. And uh, having said all of that, I come now to the uh, situation which you have seen on the television uh, that happened in Montgomery, Alabama, of all places, Montgomery, Alabama, uh, where the voting, uh, where the uh, <clears throat> bus boycott led by Dr. King uh, was held. Come to, come to find out Dexter Avenue Baptist Church that Dr. King passes was less than a mile of where the incident we're not going to be talk about uh, took place. What happened? What was the background? Well, a, uh, a cruise ship, I don't know how many people was on the cruise ship, but the cruise ship had been out and it was coming back in and uh, it couldn't dock because uh, somebody had put that boat in that area, in the spot where uh, this big old ship was trying to to get to. And so the co-pilot, who happened to be black, keep that in mind, uh, was ferried to the dock, tried to find the person who owned the boat, and asked them to please move their boat. Well, you saw what happened out on the uh, uh, video and on YouTube. It's been all over the news. Uh, this uh, co-pilot, he was, he was in a white shirt and black shorts, black pants with a black cap on his head and a black man um, named Damien uh, Pickett. Well, the people who owned the boat took exception with him, to, with him for him asking them to move that boat. So they began to assault him. Yes, assault with fists <laughs> and feet. And uh, they had got him down and everything. And it looked like it wasn't just one person. Uh, because they all looked like about five or six uh, white people were ganging up on on this uh, uh, poor uh, black uh, co uh, co captain, uh, co pilot of the ship that wanted to get in. So, uh, needless to say, they were getting the advantage of him, and he was getting to be in bad straits uh, when people came to his rescue. Yes, people came to his rescue. Not the white people, but the black people came to the rescue of uh, this distressed black man. And they began to wail on the white folks. And uh, they rescued him. And so he was able to get up and start wailing. And then you could see where there was a, a young black man that jumped off the boat and swam to shore and climbed up on the dock and joined in the fight to rescue uh, this black man. And suddenly black folk was coming from everywhere and the table would turn on these white people. And uh, they began to get the worst of it and uh, uh, flashes of uh, the Edmund Pettus Bridge or the uh, 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 nonviolent march to Selma. No, that wasn't, that wasn't nonviolent. They got, uh, they got, they were throwing hands. Uh, somebody opened up a can of whoop you what, you know what. And uh, these uh, white people got some comeuppance. And by the time the police got there, everybody had done, uh, some people had been pushed in the water, kicked in the water. And uh, some had been hit upside the head with a folding chair. Uh, hats off to the folding chair. We got some black history there. Comes to find out the folding chair was developed or invented by a black man way back down in 1911 named uh, Nathaniel Alexander. So you got black history and you got some black 
uh, comeuppance as well. And uh, hats off to everybody. I'm glad the black folks intervened and didn't let that man get beat to death or uh, seriously injured. Uh, not like the people on the subway train who just sit there and let uh, Daniel Penny uh, choke hold uh, uh, Jordan Neely to death and nobody intervened on his behalf. If anything, the white folks uh, uh, took exception and they were uh, in the majority. One on Daniel Penny's, excuse me, on uh, Jordan Neely's uh, right arm and one on Jordan Neely's left arm. And so they had their way. And it looked like this was going to be a repeat of that, but the people said, no, not this time, not on our dock, not on our watch. And they intervened and uh, rescued uh, this black man, and I'm glad they did. Uh, as the people say in the, uh, in the uh, campaign commercials, my name is so-and-so, and I endorse this product. <laughs> Amen. And so you can't always keep... Uh, uh, letting folk push you around. You're going to have to push back. And in Montgomery, Alabama, they pushed back uh, against the uh, repetition of this uh, social injustice. And as a result, uh, they upheld the highest uh, forms, the highest forms of social justice. You got equity. You got equality. Mm -hmm. And uh, you got tit for tat and blow for blow. And uh, you can't get no better than that. And the chair, well, a chair is still a chair, even as it's swinging in the air. Amen. <clears throat> Thought I'd throw that in for free. And so uh, you can see the, uh, the uh, inequities are still out there. Uh, I think Donald Trump had been there that day. Uh, that morning, rather, before this incident happened. And uh, he'd held a rally right there in Montgomery, Alabama, uh, where the, uh, the uh, state legislatures refused to uh, uh, follow the, uh, the uh, U.S. Supreme Court's mandate and redraw a, uh, the map so that they could include at least one majority black district. And... Uh, and uh, I guess the, that MAGA thing was still in their, on their minds. And uh, they've been kicking uh, black folks around so long down on that end that like the uh, goon squad in Mississippi, they said, well, we can, we're gonna kick them around. But you see, the, uh, that captain, that co-captain, he had the authority actually to ask them to move their boat. Actually he had the authority to move that boat. Uh, and, but they, you know, in that rancor, and were just like the the mob on January 6th. We ain't caring about your authority. This is us, and we doing what we want to do. And consequently, they did what they wanted to do. But it got it, the tables got turned on them. Not like up there in Washington D.C., where they were successful uh, in breaching the the walls, and breaching the doors, and breaching the windows, and everybody, you know, uh, was. Uh, mixed up because they had so many sympathizers on their side that uh, it was hard to tell who was which. But in this case, uh, they were not successful in uh, uh, destroying this uh, black man's life. He, he had people, he had people saying, hey, he had people who came to his rescue. And uh, they came in the nick of time and they came with help on their mind, you see. And... Uh, they did not hesitate, start swinging blow for blow. And uh, hats off to those women, because I saw those women, some of those black women, uh, when the black men said, you know, we're not gonna hit these, these white ladies, but black women said, well, that's all right. Come on, sister, let's do this. And so uh, I saw a lot of uh, blows thrown. I saw a lot of foot uh, kicks and things. And uh, people began to get a different uh, point of view of black folk. And I hope that went out all over the world. <laughs> so, and it ain't always, always going to be like you think it is. Uh, Sometimes you're going to have to bring it to get it. And uh, 
it may not end like you, you, you want it to end either. So you need to think about all of that before uh, you take up blows. Hmm? Uh, before you get uh, shown the door unceremoniously. Amen. All right. I trust you have uh, uh, received some type. Like I said, the, the Goon Squad in Mississippi and these, uh, whatever these people were off this boat, uh, I guess they were just, uh, like I said, filled with MAGA pride and white supremacy. And so they, they've been kicking, you know, Negroes around all this time. So I guess they figured what things wasn't going to change. You're going to kick this, these Negroes around. But like I said, this Negro had some folk that came to his aid. Now, they didn't know this man. But they saw him in distress, and they saw him at the disadvantage. And like uh, a motorist, seeing another motorist uh, pull over to the side of the highway, somebody stopped to help. And it was a lot of somebody stopped to help this black man. Uh, so he wasn't known. He's known now, Damian Pickett. And, uh, and uh, the, the folding chair is known now. He's known now that it's was developed by a black man and it was used and swung by another black man on the head of some white people. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But the scripture says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Oh no, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, hmm? against spiritual wickedness. Oh yes, rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places and you see uh whether it's the police or whether it's the private citizen you're gonna have to stand your ground and let folks know that you just can't come in in my place and, and my house and and you know just misuse me like i was a slave again no 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 you got to let put some brakes on that uh brothers and sisters and and that's what those people did in Montgomery, and I'm proud of them, and if, I ain't no shame in my game. If they need some some uh, uh, some bail money, I'm gonna send bail money. If they need to open up some uh, some GoFundMe's, I'm gonna get involved because that's what you got to do. And uh, whether you uh, out here in California or whether you're there in uh, Alabama or Mississippi, you're gonna have to help your people. That means, in other words, it's cause you out west. Doesn't mean that what they do back south ain't gonna affect you here in Los Angeles. And so we got to get involved and uh, uh, get active. And if, if if more of these folks got got some of that uh, uh, that they were dishing out there in uh, uh, Alabama with uh, fist and feet, why well, it would change that thinking. Uh, believe me, it would change that thinking about the way they do business. Uh, and some folk may say, well, now, Reverend Martin, look at you. Well, uh, I grew up with this, you know, and um, we have been turning that other cheek and getting that cheek broke and turning the other cheek and getting that cheek broke. And, uh, you know, you ain't got but two more cheeks. That's all, you know, and you turn and run, they're going to break them cheeks too. So uh, this has got to... Uh, be brought to a screeching halt. Uh, even Dr. King said uh, the Negro must straighten his back up because the man can't ride your back unless it's bent. So, so the people in Alabama were straightening their backs up, and I mean making the other folks back up and think about this thing uh, here. And that falling, falling chair upside the head is a good, good way of of uh, Bringing folks to their senses. Amen. Bringing people to their senses. And so these are the type of things that we are uh, confronted with on this uh, Friday, uh, August the 11th, 2023. And uh, I think that's a good report, don't you? And I'm glad to see the people beginning to take a stand against these recurring uh, injustices. All right, now as we get ready to wrap up here, five minutes. 
<laughs> uh, we want you to recognize, we all want you to realize and continue to uh, uh, follow the fact that the Writers Guild is still on strike. The uh, actors are, have joined them on the picket line, they are on strike. And what they are striking over is the fact that uh, they are being uh, pushed out, marginalized, pen pen penciled out of, of their own industry. And they, uh, if they don't protest now, then the powers that be will soon uh, have AI, artificial intelligence, uh, develop to the point where they, the artificial intelligence will begin to write the manuscript. Another thing while I'm thinking about it, uh, Miss Portia Woodruff, which was a black lady in Detroit, Michigan, was profiled by artificial intelligence. You know, just because a man is a person is prejudiced and he, and he got a pencil, well, if a person is prejudiced, got that pencil, they're going to steal. That pencil is going to be prejudiced. And so uh, the, the, the calculator was uh, prejudiced. And when they developed the computer, it was prejudiced. And now that they developed the artificial intelligence, it's prejudiced because the same person that uh, 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 activated all the other uh devices and techni technologies is that is, is has put his mind their mind their bigotry their biases their prejudices in this artificial intelligence and so it, it, this artificial intelligence has only been used six times and every time it, it developed it, excuse me it identified misidentified a uh, a black person he was a woman eight months pregnant and the police come arresting her for, for a carjacking it is to be absurd you know but that's the world we live in that's the place uh that we have to uh, mount our defense and our uh mount our protest in and we must cry loud and spare not and uh, uh because this ai is artificial intelligence uh is going to be the ruin of all of us and uh and don't take it lightly because like i said if a man is prejudiced and he Build software, write software, or he does code. Whatever's in that person's mind is gonna come out in that code. And so, if you're prejudiced uh, against a certain group or uh, nationality or culture, they're gonna write programs that that program is gonna be uh, as biased and reflect the same prejudices uh, that are, are demonstrated by the the uh, human uh, personality. All right, <clears throat> again, we're at the end. Uh, uh, let me see, the UPS, I think they got their strike settled. Uh, the hotel workers are still on strike here. And as I said, the uh, Writers Guild of America is still on strike. Uh, they've been joined by SAG after, after. Uh, the actors in solidarity or, or, or protesting the the outrageous way they're being uh, penciled out or, or marginalized. And so uh, as I, in my spiel, let me say what I always say. If you are working on a job and they don't want to pay you, take my advice, take the union's advice, take the SAG AFTRA's advice, and, and don't work for them. Thank you. All right, Doc, we out of here. Love you.